You have been examined. Your ship must be destroyed. We therefore grant you ten Earth time periods, known as minutes, to make preparations. Spock is manning the bridge when the Enterprise comes into contact with an unknown object in space that refuses to let them pass. Kirk is doing some exercise in the sick bay for his physical. I have heard some rumors that Shatner endured a lot of fat shaming on set. Like this video if you think Kirk's tummy is cute. Anyway, Kirk sees the alert and vid calls Spock from sick bay. Uh, you want to point that screen upward, Jimbo? Because right now all Spock is seeing is your titties. Not that he might. Kirk leaves sick bay and heads up to the bridge. I'm sorry, is it tits out Tuesday on the Enterprise? Because I do love tits out Tuesday, but seriously, put your fucking shirt on. After a lot of debating, the crew decides to pull the Enterprise away from the cube, but it pursues them. Due to the radiation the cube is giving off, Kirk has no choice but to order it destroyed. Afterward, he mentions that this kid Bailey's reaction time was slow. Earlier, Bailey had shouted in surprise when the cube had started following them. Kirk talks to Bones and worries that Bailey may be too green to navigate. Speaking of green, Rand brings Kirk his lunch and he is disappointed to find out that it's green leaves. Some people say that Khan is Kirk's greatest foe, and those people are wrong. It's salad. Are you serious? It's not what it looks right like. Right in front of my salad? Kirk also makes this truly baffling statement. I get my hands on the headquarters genius that assigned me a female yeoman. What's the matter, Jim? Don't you trust yourself? I've already got a female to worry about. Her name's the Enterprise. What? I guess they're trying to say that Kirk is worried that he might be too distracted by his attraction to Rand to get his work done, maybe? I don't know. Kirk's lunch is interrupted by contact from another object in space. The ship is seized by a tractor beam, and an entity called Balok appears on their screen and more or less informs them that they have ten minutes to live until Balok blows up the Enterprise. Bailey panics and starts being all like, THE END IS NIGH! Kirk rightfully relieves him, and Bones tries to say that he's put too much pressure on Bailey. No, I think he's just an idiot. Inspired by poker, Kirk gets an idea to bluff Bailey by telling him that they have a substance aboard called Corbamite, which would destroy him and his ship should he choose to destroy the Enterprise. Death has little meaning to us. If it has none to you, then attack us now. We grow annoyed at your foolishness. Who else is wet in here? Bailey re-enters, calmer now, and the clock ticks down to zero and the ship doesn't explode. The Corbamite maneuver works. The Vasarius says they'll let the Enterprise leave intact if Kirk can produce evidence of the Corbomite. Request denied. Man, no one has ever had bigger dick energy than James Tiberius Kirk. Balok decides to tow them to a habitable planet and maroon the crew there so they can't be a threat. Kirk pretends to go along with this, but then pulls free of the tractor beam once Balok lets his guard down. The Fisarius sends up a distress signal and Kirk beams over with Bones to help whoever's on board. He also takes Bailey along for being basically competent at his job. They beam aboard and find that the entity they'd been talking to was just a puppet and that the real Balok is a teeny tiny man played by Opie Taylor's younger brother. The distress signal was a test to see if the Enterprise were as altruistic as they purported to be. Balok runs his ship by himself and requests that one of Kirk's crew join him to keep him company for a while and Bailey volunteers. I like to think that Kirk only let him go to get rid of him because he's so incompetent. <laughs> the Corbomite Maneuver was the first regular series episode in production, and I've started a second playlist in production order for those of you who requested it. And the pains of production are still somewhat present. The script has great exchanges, some nice bits of character development, subtle themes, and even a clever twist. But narratively, the story is just kind of all over the place. There's a lot of dicking around in the beginning, and we spend a good portion focusing on this rando, who I can't even count as a dead shirt because he doesn't even die. And he's just not interesting. Bones keeps chastising Jim for being too hard on Bailey, but I don't see that. I see an officer f***ing up and making an already stressful situation even more stressful. Their goddamn lives are on the line, and he's over here having a panic attack. It's Kirk's job to correct him. But the theme of deception comes into play in two different ways, with Kirk's poker bluff and Balok's puppet. Spock compares the standoff between the Enterprise and the Fasarius to a chess match, but Kirk says it's like a poker game and both players are bluffing. I see Kirk often getting called a loose cannon, and I just don't think that's fair. He's a risk taker, sure, and sometimes he may even break the rules, but only when the situation demands it. When people call Kirk reckless, I wonder if this episode is what they're thinking of. Kirk took a gamble, but he was in a desperate situation. It was either take a bold risk or sit idly by and let his crew get blown to kingdom come. Starfleet doesn't just hand out captaincies to any cocky idiot, at least not in this universe. It isn't a perfect episode, but it's certainly not the worst. So, next video, we're finally talking about the cage. 
you can all relax because we're gonna talk about the fucking cage. Are you happy? We're doing the goddamn cage!